Welcome, everybody. Um, as you can clearly hear, we don't take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> we work at Shogun, where uh, people are people, and ultimately we uh, just do our best to help this company grow and have a ton of fun doing it, as I hope you pick up in the uh, tone of this presentation today. So with that being said, my name is James Parker, and I head up recruiting here at Shogun. And I'm joined by Anne, who is in Chicago, along with me, and then Gabby, who's in Texas. I uh, got a little bit of more sun on the <laughs> screen than we do. Um, yeah, and we just uh, ultimately want to uh, tell you more about who we are, what Shogun's doing, and then we will have a QA and a at the end. So if you do have any questions in the meantime, as we're presenting, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll go through and address those um, towards the end. And yeah, other than that, just have a ton of fun. We hope you enjoy this presentation and invite you to come and obviously hang out with us in the booth to chat through anything else if we don't get to all the Q&A um, at the end. And then also everything in this deck will also be in the booth with some other additional uh, things that you can take a look at and engage with. So um, yeah, with that being said, I have a little video from Finbar. So he is our Scottish, well, I guess he's American now, but from Scotland. He's our founder and CEO. Um, and he's just going to unpack a little bit more around Shogun, who we are, what we do, why you should work for us. and if the video is a little soft, I do encourage you to turn up the volume on your side. So over to Finbar. We're Shogun, and our mission is to empower brands to create exceptional e-commerce experiences. And we're building the best remote company in the world along the way. We're an inclusive, remote, diverse, and globally distributed team. And yes, we're hiring. I'm Finbar, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Shogun. I wrote the first line of code for Shogun in January 2015. We started by building a page builder for Ruby on Rails and found an amazing fit in e-commerce. Our page builder product helps people build, measure, and optimize their storefronts on platforms like Shopify and BigCommerce. We've learned that merchants and businesses of all sizes need help to create stunning e-commerce stores. And today, we have over 18,000 clients ranging from solo entrepreneurs to Fortune 500 companies. Our clients include top direct-to-consumer brands like Lisa, Chubby's, Blender's Eyewear, and many others. Our software has helped these brands and others optimize their stores and make billions of dollars. We've recently launched our second product. It's called Shogun Frontend. It's a front-end as a service solution that helps people create super fast next-generation storefronts. It's at the intersection of three major trends, headless commerce, Jamstack progressive web apps, and low-code, no-code tools. We're democratizing access to tools that help businesses of all sizes compete online and take their storefronts to the next level. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about Shogun, and please reach out to our recruiting team if you have any questions or are interested in learning more. Thank you. Hey James, I think you're muted. <laughs> I need you in my life. Thank you. Oh, I got really excited. Let me try that again. Um, so, like Finbar said, we we built our first uh, Shogun page builder product, and it grew like crazy. So, big thumbs up for product uh, market fit there. And then we recently built our second SaaS or software as a service based Shogun front end product. And this, uh, even though we just recently launched it this year, has already gained a ton of traction. So I'm just going to show you a quick video that outlines uh, what that product is. So here is Shogun front end. Load your e-commerce pages in less than a second. Build and update pages visually with an intuitive experience manager. And make updates globally with a powerful CMS. Load faster and increase conversions with Shogun front end. So we have incredible products, but obviously we're a little biased, so don't just take our word for it. Take the word of over 18,000 brands who rely on and trust us to drive their e-commerce volumes. Um, and actually, that's even grown since we put this together. We're closer to about 19,000 customers, actually. So um, definitely are trending in the right direction and have a ton of momentum. So the three of us, uh, and Gabby and myself, we started about five months ago, um, which is just crazy to even say out loud. And 
we were a little over 60 team members at Shogun at the time, and we've already surpassed 100 team members. Um, and we're growing, I mean, we have what, 10, 20 people joining uh, each hiring class. And uh, I think back to this morning, I was in the general company-wide Slack channel and we're already at over, I think it was 130, 131 people. So uh, absolutely wild growth, but as fun and as exciting as building and shipping great uh, groundbreaking products and um, as fun as how quickly we're scaling, a company is nothing without an incredible culture and purpose-driven values. So I'm gonna hand over to Anne to chat through uh, our culture and values here. Anne. Yes, is it on the values driving us page? Sorry, I must be having connectivity <laughs> issues. Okay, um, all right, so here are our three values. The first is work in the open, which to us means operating with high integrity and choosing what's right over what's easy and being transparent as a company and with each other. The second is people are people, which is to treat yourself, colleagues and customers with dignity, empathy and respect and start from a presumption of positive intent. The third is win and grow together, strive to be the best individually and as a team and support and encourage each other and seek opportunities for growth. Our values help to inform our culture. And here are some adjectives our teams have used to describe Shogun's culture. Some ways these show up in our day to day, we encourage people to ask questions and make decisions as a team. This builds collaboration and trust. Assuming positive intent is huge when so much of our communication is asynchronous. A lot can get lost in the nuance uh, of written communication. So just remember that all are coming from a place of trying to do what's best for Shogun and our teams. Failures are an opportunity to learn. Not if, but when you fail, fail fast, learn from it, and move on. And celebrate the little wins, like team member successes and little steps along the way. And a big part of our culture is also, also diversity and inclusion, which Gabby will dive into. Yeah, when we fail, we fail fast. I <laughs> failed already, but not that. that's like the classic <laughs> Zoom fail of the year. So take it from us, we live our values each day. Okay, I'm not here, Anne, so I'm hoping this is where I chime in here. Um, so at Shogun, we are on a journey to become one of the best comp uh, remote companies in the world. Um, so central to this idea is building a diverse team where people from all backgrounds, experiences, and perspectives can find a belonging. And in order to make that happen, we are committed to focusing, to focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion at every stage within the Shogi team member experience beginning with our talent acquisition diversity efforts. So our TA team really takes advantage of the latest technology in order to ensure that our talent pipeline reflects society at large with a range of ethnicities, ages, genders, and backgrounds reflected from um, all within our candidate pool. Um, and something that we do once you are a team member uh, to really drive employee engagement is that we use tools to really drive peer-to-peer uh, -peer recognition and cross-team collaboration, and you will see that daily um, in our Slack channels and emails all over the place. Um, and then all of this really kind of cultivates an inclusive environment from the recruiting side to onboarding, promotions, compensation. We are truly focused on ensuring people are treated fairly across all stages of uh, the team member life cycle. Um, and so kind of diving into what our team members are, um, we call us Shogis. So uh, team members, Shogis, Shogis, team members, we go hand in hand. Um, and all of us play a huge part in belonging and inclusivity um, and to truly live our value of people are people. Um, so we treat our colleagues with respect and we assume positive intent. intent. Um, we all play a part in creating the best remote company together. Um, and also to kind of dive into some of the things that our other fellow Shogis have said, um, some central ideas that um, really, uh, that we really embody are just um, that the people that we work with are amazing. You feel so supported, valued, and respected here. It is insane. Like, even myself, like, 
I've only been here, as James said, probably about five months now, and I have never felt so truly valued and respected as I do right now. Um, and that's quite literally what my little photo there says. <laughs> um, but yeah, the central idea here is that you really will just be surrounded and supported by just the most amazing people ever. And it's, it's truly incredible. Um, and so diving into our leadership team, uh, they, these people truly embody all of our values as well. First, introducing Kristen Haybach. She is our chief sales officer, started with us a couple months back. She led enterprise sales at Atlassian, and she's going to be building a direct and a channel sales team from entry level up through director level. She has been remote for years, and so she has a really strong track record of building and growing successful remote sales forces. And she's currently hiring for a director of channel sales and a sales development representative. Next up, we have, well, we call him Beanie. Uh, he's our CTO. Uh, he was one of the original engineers. Um, also, <laughs> I'm proud of myself for unmuting there. Just, I got to call that out. Um, and yeah, we're growing a ton. So engineering is obviously at the core of everything we do. The fact that we have incredible products um, that have shipped so quickly is largely because of what Beanie's been able to set up. And then uh, some of the roles we're currently hiring for. So multiple Ruby on Rails engineers, React, uh, TypeScript, is our preferred front end. JavaScript probably still fine though. Um, director of QA is a role we currently have open. We're going to build out that team and I'll, I'll talk about that later. Solutions architect, uh, technical project managers, um, open to Scrum Master type backgrounds as well. Anybody that's used to driving projects. And then site reliability en engineers, ultimately, right? All these companies are selling on our platform. So we need to have a flippin' phenomenally reliable uh, platform as a whole. So. Next up, we have Tapan. So Tapan is our chief marketing officer. He came to us from PagerDuty and Splunk, and he's going to be building out our marketing strategy and execution. He describes himself as a startup guy. He says startups are in his DNA. So he loves all that comes with building a startup, like taking risks and trying different things. And he's currently hiring for a digital marketing manager, a senior manager or director of uh, partner marketing, and a director of social media and communications. And then Steve Wan, uh, our VP of product. So he joined us from Duo Security, where he built and scaled the, the products over there. Um, and Steve is probably one of my favorite hiring managers, uh, somebody who I believe truly encapsulates our values as a whole and just is a ton of fun. It has a lot of uh, optimism about the future of the products we're building and how we can continually drive value uh, for our customers and his ability to have such a customer focused and customer centric mindset when building products is something that I think if anything will continue to have a, a positive impact at Shogun. And, Currently product managers and a couple of implementation managers are uh, the roles we're hiring for and we have a few more that are gonna be opening up uh, later this month. And Greg Beldum is our VP of design. He was He's been instrumental in developing the seamless look and feel of both our brand and our products. And he came to us from Shopify. Um, and he is currently hiring for a marketing designer and a motion designer. One thing that I think is really great about Greg is he is super keen on building a highly collaborative design team across the different design functions. And then I will mention as well, um, we do have our VP of people who is starting soon and, and she's just an incredible uh, hire that we will end up making. Uh, so I can't wait for her to start and continue to build on our culture and values. And then we also are busy hiring for a, a VP of finance as well. So um, our executive team as a whole are all pretty new and we're just going on this journey together. So um, next up, Gabby, I believe you're chatting about some benefits. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so our benefits do vary by location um, and they are competitive based on the region. Um, so some of these, uh, they may be included in your area. So we do offer equity, we offer competitive salary, um, various health, dental and vision benefits that you can choose from, uh, retirement plans, 
We also have PTO, we have sick leave, we have company holidays. And in addition to all three of those things, we also have Shogi Appreciation Days, which our lovely COO and CEO kind of delegate throughout the year, which is super awesome compared to all the other time that we have off. Um, and we also have team bonding activities, including our annual company retreat, which we will hopefully be doing once um, you know it's safe to travel again, uh, hopefully soon, crossing all my fingers. Um, we also offer a reimbursement for a shared co-working space up to $200 per month. So in case you wanted to get out of your home office and kind of venture into one of those, you can. Um, and then we also offer a one-time $500 office setup stipend that you can use for a chair, a new desk, you know, whatever you need in order to get set up for success at home. Um, but I would have to say probably our number one uh, benefit here is that we are fully remote. Um, that's super, super, super awesome. And we have always been remote. We, we didn't just start it yesterday or like a week ago, like from the ground up, we have always been 100% remote. We we were cool before it was cool to be remote. It's, it's who we who we've been from the get go. Uh, yeah, after Finbar graduated from Y Combinator, I think it was 2018. It was something that he believed in before we even uh, saw it become a necessity. So he's got an eye for spotting trends. I will say that. And yes, e-commerce is booming. And yes, Finbar started building this e-commerce product and platform before uh, everything just happened. So. Uh, he's a good, a good, a good CEO, a good founder too, to have leading Shogun. Um, the other thing I'll mention too, so Anne's got some swag on, Gabby's got some swag. I've got the cap. So I'm just going to drop this in the chat. If you want to go take a look, we just launched the Shogun general store. So it's built on our own platform, um, utilizing our own tech stack. So if you want to go and take a look at what a very quick, um, sub second speed loading page looks like head on over there and it should be in the chat here and obviously if you want to buy any shogun swag go for it um so in addition to everything we mentioned so far and the, the roles we outlined earlier we do have a ton of positions that we're in the process of opening so like i mentioned we've been doubling in size pretty consistently and we have another hundred odd roles that we're going to be opening uh, over the next course of the year so on the engineering side there's even more beyond this list. Um, QA engineers, a bunch of different principal level roles. Security is going to be a big one for us. Um, and then continuing to hire all the, the roles we mentioned earlier. And then on the non-engineering side, building out a lot of our core competency groups as well. So these are just the ones that I know for certain are going to open up shortly. There are a lot more that we're going to be opening. So highly encourage you to go and uh, follow us on LinkedIn for updates and we post a lot about our new hires, our shogis um, and other just interesting things about the e-commerce and headless e-commerce space. And then also encourage you to check out the career page. Um, well, first of all, come to our booth after this and then interact with us there and then obviously check out all the, the roles we do have open and feel free to apply. And um, yeah, with that being said, we'd love to. Yes, thanks, Gabby, for getting that. Uh, career page in the chat. We'd love to just spend some time going through some Q&A and just chatting with you all and um, just hanging out a little bit. So let me stop sharing my screen here quickly. Oh, did it work? I did. It did, yes. Yes. So we're getting some questions on locations and where we're able to hire. I can tackle that one. Um, so it is position specific. If you're interested in a specific role, it will say in that job posting where we're hiring that. Reason being is we have specifications around time zones of where we need support. We do prioritize uh, Canada, um, the US, the UK and Ireland, but there are um, exceptions that can be made for technical positions. And hopefully that will change in the future, but for right now, that's where it is. Ooh, I see a question here. And Anne, you, we can just go back and forth. It looks like yeah, we just jumped. Oh, there she is, she's back. What's up, <laughs> <laughs> so, Gabby, how are you, how you doing? <laughs> you missed the presentation, it was great. No, just um, yeah, so we'll just go through and look at some here. But I saw a question about a, I think it was a 
data analytics position. So we do have one open now. We have a few more opening up later in the year. Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, this isn't true for every role, but for the most part, these initial roles, we are hiring maybe you consider it like mid-level type individuals um, just to really get the motion going very quickly. And then later on in the year, we'll start looking at more junior level folks. Um, but yeah, these first few hires, we do need to be able to come in and plug and play right away just because we're moving so incredibly fast as a company. But yeah, keep keep coming to the career page for sure. Question from, uh, from Brad. Um, how has being remote first changed your growth as an organization? So I think, you know, hearing from Nick and Finbar talk that it helped us scale really fast and find talent really easily, but also ensure that we have a diverse and inclusive workforce because we're not tied to any particular locations. So I think it just accelerated our growth. Any funny growing pains was the caveat to that. Nothing that like specifically jumps to mind, but I think overall, you know, when you're growing really fast, there mm -hmm. are growing pains with growing really fast. And, you know, to certain people, that's exciting to have some gray area and ambiguity and meaty problems to solve. And if that's your jam, this is definitely the place for you. And I, I will add that um, intentionally being remote from the get go has allowed us to hire the best talent. Like, Shogis at Shogun are the best of the best. And it also then allows us to truly hire a diverse uh, talent pool from a diverse talent pool. We, we build a product that serves anybody in the world. And, and mm -hmm. ideally, we want our products to be designed and built by people from all kinds of different backgrounds, experiences, um, races, ethnicities, you name it, genders. And being able to be remote has allowed us to really tap into that early. Once again, like before it became a thing that everybody now does, it was something that was core to our DNA. And that's been a ton of fun. It's just to, I was on a call what, Tuesday last week and it was myself, someone in Brazil, Canada, <laughs> the poor individual in the Philippines. I think it was like 11.30 PM for him. Um, and then we had somebody in Scotland and it was incredible. Like, I just was like, there are so many different types of people in this conversation right now. And for me, that's really uh, helped me to even get better having other people's opinions and ideas impact how I think about things. So good question though. How does asynchronous onboarding work? Um, do you want to start with that one, James, or do you want me to take it? Yeah, I. How does asynchronous onboarding work? So I kind of threw it in a little bit too. Uh, I said that we have a dedicated onboarding team that utilizes great communication through email and Slack that sets up reminders to kind of guide you through the process, uh, make sure that you're set up. Um, but of course, you know your managers, your fellow shogis, they will definitely be great support systems to kind of help you through if you have any questions um you know, all throughout the whole entire process i still have questions and they're always you know eager to help me out no matter what yeah and and because once again it's something that is aligned with who we've been from the beginning we're not like stumbling into it now so a lot of the way we've designed our communication methods or the way we track and document changes um is intentionally done in a way that allows everybody to work at a time that works best for them. So we don't expect you if you, I don't know, live in Northern Ireland to join a call that's at like a crazy hour for you. No, we're, we're gonna make sure that the agenda is clear for whatever meeting is, that notes are taken, we record a lot of things, we share a lot of things. Um, and similarly with onboarding, there's that foresight. It's, it's thinking, okay, if this person is onboarding at what would be I don't know, midnight in the US, let's make sure we get them the right things that they have a buddy who's in their time zone to answer questions during the morning for them. And there's just a lot of thought and we don't get it right all the time. Like we have a ton of grace for each other, but um, we always assume positive intent. And I saw somebody else just mention here. So primarily uh, we're hiring for remote roles in the US, Canada, UK at large, so all of the UK and then Ireland or Republic of Ireland. Um, and then there are a couple of other places we're starting to prioritize now just based on time zone needs and whatnot. Um, and then for some engineering roles, we 
um, are able to consider individuals from outside those regions that I mentioned. And this too is going to continually change as we grow. This is just what the setup is today. Going back to onboarding, just something to add there. What Gabby mentioned is current state. We have an HR coordinator, Brittany Human, who is working tireless, tirelessly on her soul. of onboarding. So improvements, you know, it's a work in progress, right? We want to make mm -hmm. sure that onboarding shogis have the best experience possible. So that is not a process that will stay stagnant. Yes. And in the Philippines is one of those countries that I meant like i mentioned earlier that's newer so we just yeah just started prioritizing hiring in the philippines as well uh, pretty recently yeah good point a question from ryan on financial funding are there any major investors that we should be aware of um so our investors are excel initialized capital um vmg and y combinator so they also back similar companies like airbnb Instacart. So we're in a pretty prestigious company, which we're pumped about. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just quickly add to that as well. Let me just pull it up here. I just want to see what the the actual verbiage is. But we, um, outside of those VCs, we also raised funding from uh, leaders and like high level leadership individuals from other companies like Instacart, Webflow, Magento. So other companies that are very e commerce driven realize how we're kind of breaking new ground in uh the e-commerce space and invested in us along with all the the actual vcs that uh that ann mentioned as well so a lot of validation when people who have seen success in e-commerce choose to invest in us uh shopify let me take this one quick um is shopify an ally or competitor so shopify is a massive ally for us so what happens is when you build or you go and start a store on shopify you can build out your front end experience and we are if not the highest one of the highest uh, ranking apps that sit on top of the shopify back end so they they kind of own all the operations like fulfillment side of it and then everything that's uh, customer facing is really where we stand up and thrive um so yeah we Big, big uh, partnership with Shopify, uh, among many other platforms similar to them. What are the upcoming challenges for Shogun? Ooh. Every role that is open means there's a challenge that isn't fully being solved. So yep. <laughs> for us, it's hiring very quickly. Um, wink, wink, we work remotely, help us fill those jobs. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I would say that's probably one of our, our biggest things right now is just keeping up with what we need to do uh, in terms of growing. Yep. And then also we're moving so fast, right? So I'm, I'm just thinking to quality now being a big thing. We're hiring the QA director. We're moving fast. So being able to um, identify and, and fix bugs very quickly and just make sure high quality code is being deployed like that's obviously a big thing too that uh if finbar were here he would speak to because i know that it's top of mind for him is just delivering quality to everybody that we uh, partner with mm -hmm. okay overview of your recruitment process and shogun's approach to screening and evaluating resumes me? Cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we have a mixture. So we, of course, love inbound applicants, but we also go out and work to diversify our pipeline on the talent acquisition side and make sure that our hiring teams are seeing a, candidate, are seeing a group of candidates from a diverse background, both in terms of how those candidates identify, but also where they've worked and what experiences they bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Um, we have implemented just last quarter's major props to Gabby and James, an applicant tracking system, which gives us a lot of structure to our process to make sure that we're getting back to candidates on a timely basis, that they're moving through our process on a timely basis. Ultimately, our goal as recruiters is to make sure that both our candidates and our hiring managers have an exceptional experience during that recruitment process. Well and if, and, yeah, if anything, I would say for me personally, so I, I used to work at Glassdoor or Glassdoor uh, for Americans on the call today. And the one thing I will say Shogun does very well relative to other companies I've worked at is 
looking at talent beyond just like, oh, where did you work? What company did you come from? So I don't think we have a single job where we require somebody to have a degree, for example. If you've done unique work and you've done it in a way that's helped you develop the talent or the skill, that's more important. Um, our engineering interview track or interview plan as a whole is definitely focus more on your ability uh, and we do some like refactoring together with you and we show you some actual uh, examples of things that happen at uh, Shogun and um, we've actually even had people dive into live code with us to look through things and it's your ability to identify and refactor and make suggestions and think together is more important than like oh can you do this math equation and did you graduate from a college in san francisco like we could care all less so um all that to say i, I do really um admire how our founders have set the precedent of what strong talent means and it's actual applicable skills not just how fancy your resume is so and kind of a similar follow-up question from Cedar on that. What about the stages of hiring? Is it straight to video? Will there be online tests? That's more position specific, um, dependent on the needs of the role. So for our engineer positions, there's a coding test involved. Um, for positions that are a little more technical, outside of engineering, sometimes there is a skill assessment. Again, just more position specific. But typically, yeah, you'll apply. Um, recruiter will look at your, your resume, chat with the hiring manager, and then have a conversation with you uh, just to also make sure that you like what we have to offer, right? Like you're interviewing us, we're interviewing you. It's not just a one way thing. Um, we can tell you everything, show you behind the curtain, give you insights into the role, what we do. And then recruiter hiring managers are most likely going to be next. You're going to talk to the person who's hiring for the role. And then we do the team interview loop where you meet more people on the team. There might be a technical component to it. And then, Finally, uh, as of right now, we still have everybody meet with our, one of our founders. So our founders are heavily invested. One of our three like biggest goals for the year is aligned to the people are people or hiring uh, phenomenal people. So they are very involved in having conversations, asking questions and showing that they have a lot of empathy and do care and that they're not just like so far removed from the people that we hire. So that's the process today. Um, it's about four or five stages altogether. And, because you're not coming on site, we're, we're able to move pretty quickly. So uh, for the most part, Gabby's been able to figure out how to schedule and coordinate interviews at a global scale. So, oh my gosh, Gabby, like where would we be without you? Seriously? Yeah, I was about to say throughout that whole entire process, I will be guiding through you. Like, yeah, there she is. With, with the recruiter and I, like we will both partner in that to make sure that you were just kept in the loop, like, and we'll just get you in, like in the process as soon as possible. Yeah, be nice to Gabby. She can I can I share your news, Gabby? Or do you want to rather not? You can share. Gabby just graduated from college yesterday. So huge clap. She's been working for what like seven, eight years and doing college um around your work schedule. So huge. yeah, so after nine years of of kind of grinding it out and and working so incredibly hard gabby graduated so we're all super pumped and yeah so be really nice to gabby if you apply just mention her in your cover letter be like gabby this one's for you <laughs> thanks guys thank y'all uh, oh there it is look at all those messages yeah congrats so gabby nice. and and you're cool too just by the way i just all right okay we're, we're, we're a fun team we're a fun team um the ATS has been cool. And maybe we wrap on this one. I, I just saw, um, I think I saw Jesse. We had something about Moscow. Cool. Uh, so the ATS question. So we don't automatically um, like dump out a resume based on you having the right or wrong word in um, your application. So if like we are hiring for Ruby and your resume doesn't say Ruby, it's not going to get like dumped by the machine. So if you do get a rejection email or if you do get an email about moving forward, our recruiters are actually the ones that are very involved um, in looking at every application coming in. So we don't take shortcuts there. We currently don't or aren't able to sponsor for employment visas. Um, 
once again, this is something that could change as we continue to grow. Um, but we do hire in so many different regions that we just uh, require individuals to be able to legally work in those regions. So uh, hypothetically, you're in, I don't know, uh, somebody said London. So you're in London, you support Arsenal, unfortunately, um, and you apply to a job. As long as you can work in London, you're good. Um, so yeah, that's, and each each job will talk about that in the job description mm -hmm. itself. It'll talk about which locations. And if you have any questions also, um, feel free to dump those into, not dump them, but bring those into the uh, booth where we'll be going through some of the, the questions we didn't get to and, and we'll respond to you over the course of the day, so. One from Willie that had a couple of upvotes. If there isn't a specific job that's available, is there a way to send resumes to the leads for future positions? You. Yeah, so <clears throat> Gabby, a good thing to talk about maybe is having a general application pool. Yeah. Um, what I would say for now though, ooh, I might, this might be scary. So jobs at getshogun.com. Um, let me talk to you. It's because you're all here and you made the effort, so I feel like you should be able to uh, connect with me directly. Shoot an email to jobs at getshogun.com um, if there isn't a job that, that you see open and you're excited about Shogun, um, and then I'll make sure that we get those applications uh, into our system. And then when we do have roles open up, obviously we can connect with you then. So jobs at getshogun.com, um, please. I think that's also like having a, a more built out recruiting function that's more proactive is a more future state ideal. We just implemented our ATS like two months ago, so we're still working through the kinks. So please bear with us there, but we'd love to be able to do that down the road. Awesome, just looking if there's any more. What are the traits and characteristics of a successful employee? Once again, our, our values and the culture we continually build is so important to us. Like you could be the best at whatever your skill set is, but if you aren't somebody who's going to add to our culture and help us grow and really become a more empathetic company where we care about people as people, we win and grow together. Um, like that collaborative nature of um, and working in the open, like we we're just very transparent as a company and how we work together and um, being vulnerable in that way. Like those are things that are we probably over index on more than just your skill set. So there's a lot of similar people applying to a role. Like those are the things that are really going to stand out to us. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd say look at our values and. Uh, and the culture slide. And once again, the deck is in the, the booth uh, with some extra other stuff that wasn't in the presentation. We have a few more videos from other uh, key people in the company. So I recommend you go over and, and take a look at that. And someone asked uh, like about the recruitment process, like another ad there is, that's another thing that we really look for and vet for are going to be how well do you align to our values? Thus, how well uh, will that culture be aligned? Um, and then I just saw one here quick about the level. So yeah, for a lot of our engineering roles, we are looking at individuals from what, like two, three years plus in terms of we'll connect, we'll interview, and that'll ultimately determine what level if you come in as like a React or Senior React or React 2 or Principal or whatever. So we're still at a, a stage right now where we do have a lot of different types of roles. So uh, feel free to apply to one of them and. and through getting to know you, we'll figure out exactly what level uh, to bring you in at, should everything go well. Jonathan, well, what did Jonathan say? The black on black outfit part <laughs> of the job. <laughs> to be honest, I, I got no shame. Maybe. I, I get really warm, so for me, it's just, I don't want you to be able to see this. Look at that, you can't see any stains. Oh my goodness. So that's, that's, for me. that's why I wear black, I don't know about Anne and Gabby. <laughs> Too funny. I also realize I'm wearing the exact same outfit as my picture uh, that I uploaded, the cap and the black t-shirt. So that's funny. I actually just wear this every day. It's just seamless branding. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have four more minutes, guys. Or two more minutes now. Three more minutes? I can't. I'm count. rocking a black tee right now. Good, good stuff, Jonathan. Why not? Oh yeah, there's the shogi swag. Three Great. more yeah. minutes. Um, the something else that I and Gabby and Anne, feel free to add anything here, but 
something else that was cool that I really appreciate is um, a couple of times a month we do like a company all hands slash ask me anything with oh, the two yeah. founders, Nick and Finbar. And it's still just like, it's crazy to me that we have the ability to just like slack somebody who started this company worth like millions of dollars. And that um, kind of like small feeling, even though we're growing quickly is something that really like each day I wake up and I'm like, oh, like I can bring so much value. I'm not just a person, a part of a team. It's a part of a team that gets lost a part of another team. It's like everything we do brings impact and, and being able to work closely with our leaders and founders is, um, and just to ask them directly, Nick, what do you think about this? And he's like, da, da, da. and it's like, I don't know. That's cool to me. Gabby, yeah. Ryan, would you agree? Yeah, totally. Um, question from Shauna on location-based pay. Do people doing the same job get paid comparable salaries or are people who live in cheaper areas paid less? Um, we do take into account market. When we think about hiring, we want to make sure that we're paying competitively for your skill set in your area. Um, and in terms of internal equity, we have an annual compensation review to ensure that you are paid equitably, uh, regardless of race, gender, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, against your peers and for your skill set and what you're bringing to the table. Yeah, and it's it's not too uncommon where we'll have somebody apply for a role and we ask you what compensation or salary uh, would make you happy or what, like ultimately we want this to be something you're excited about. We're not trying to save a few dollars or anything. Um, and more often than not, people do apply and they let us know what they would like. And we end up paying more than that um, based on the data that we look into for the value that they will add. We're paying them for the value, not paying them just because we're trying to save money on a on a hire or something. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But but we take it seriously and we we do pay really well um, for people that we hire. I have a cat named Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she asked what pets we have. <laughs> no pets. I have a toddler. <laughs> no pets. <laughs> uh, human pet. Oh. Well, thank you guys. I think we're running out of time. I really appreciate all y'all for attending and listening to us. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. <laughs> yeah, and come chat with us in the booth, leave questions there. We'll get back to you over the course of the day and visit Chogun's LinkedIn page. Follow us, uh, follow us on our profiles, visit the career page. Um, yeah, and thanks again for, for joining us. And thank you, Anne and Gabby, for, for joining as well. That was a ton of fun. So. It was fun, thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Bye.